Welcome, uh, Roxy and Sophia and Marquette, Marina and Jack. Thanks for coming. Um, and um, let me tell you, and welcome, Jacqueline. Let me tell you uh, the plan. Again, it's all about chi-square distributions, but we're going to be finishing that off today. And we're also going to spend some time in the project. So let me start out by jumping to the quiz. Okay. So here is the quiz and question number one says 26% of all cars in the United States are white, 19% are black, 18% are gray, and the rest are other colors. Suppose that of the 200 cars in Tahoe were, there, were observed, 47 were white, 43 were black, 37 were gray, and the rest were other colors. You want to find out if Tahoe differs from the rest of the United States in terms of car color. And then there's a bunch of questions. Let me copy and paste those to make it a little easier. Put it into the... Okay. So the first question is, what is the name of the test that we will use? So for this particular example, or this study, what, what test are we gonna use? And that's the big question. Hopefully you all know, not a trick question or anything. So what's the name of the test to use for this particular example? Okay, chi-squared is part of it, but as I mentioned, there's a bunch of different chi-squared tests. Chi-squared is like the distribution. I'll start out with chi-squared. Chi squared, um, goodness of fit. Yeah. Chi square, goodness of fit. And I just want to give you a heads up on a silly grammar issue. I think like half the books that I read, they say chi squared, and the other half say chi square. And actually, I don't know, you know, it's like depends on which book you read. So, whether you write chi-square or chi-squared, that doesn't matter, but goodness of fit is definitely the test, okay? And if you're in a hurry, what, what do you think you should write? Goodness of fit. Okay, but even more hurried? <laughs> G-O-F, G-O-F. So hypothetically, if we had just written goodness of fit test, is that still right? Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. But chi-squared right. isn't enough because as I mentioned, um, today we're going to be doing chi-squared independence and chi-squared homogeneity, um, but there really is only one goodness of fit test. Does that make sense? Yeah, if you wrote GOF, that's good enough too. Okay, so on the final, it's going to be multiple choice. You click the right number, so, so you don't have to write anything actually. Um, until, I think there might be one or two problems. There's a few problems you have to do that, but most of them are just click. Any questions on part A? AK, state the null and alternative hypotheses. As I mentioned, what word must be in the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis? What did I tell you that was mandatory? Distribution. Distribution. So if you didn't have the word distribution, that's not good. Um, I mean, there's other words you got to have too. And symbol, I mean, kind of symbols. I mean, the only symbol really is H naught. <laughs> okay. And I like to just start the distribution and then start thinking. So now let's read, okay? We're looking at, we're looking at cars in Tahoe, okay? And we're comparing that to the United States. So we can say is the distribution of, and it's car color, of car color in Tahoe is the same as the distribution of car color in the US. I have a question. Sure. So like you said, you said it's like easier to copy and paste, but mm -hmm. I kind of just like, I add, like I put distribution in my like, in my H9 and H1 but it's mm -hmm. not the same, it's not, I didn't like copy and paste it. Like as long as it makes sense, does it, does it still count? 
Yeah, as long as as long as what you're writing is in the same light as what it should be. Right. So, but hopefully you agree. Watch how fast. Ready? Copy. Paste. And I'm going to change one word. What word do I change? Or or add one word? Not. I try to make it easy for you. So I wasn't saying copy and paste because I'm being mean and that's what you have to do. No, no, no. I was just like, I kind of just panicked because I didn't know how to word it. And okay. So. Yeah, you got to change eight notch to H1. Oh. <laughs> um, but that's how easy it is. And that, that's why I recommend copy and paste because it's so easy. Do you agree that was easy? Yeah. Okay, so H1, let me read it again, because again, I, we talked about this, but I wanna actually read it out. The distribution of car color in Tahoe is not the same as the distribution of car color in the United States. So a, so a couple of important things in terms of what I'll be looking for. One is you should have H not colon, you should have H1 colon. Okay, that's mandatory for every hypothesis test that we do in this whole class. You always have to put those in because that pretty much states what the null and alternative hypotheses are. Then you have to have the word distribution. That's mandatory. And then you have to have the context of the question. And the, the question is talking about car color. And then for H naught, it should be about being the distribution the same. And for H1, it should be not the same. If you wrote is different from the distribution of car color in the United States, that's fine too. Because that means exactly the same thing. Okay. But the meaning has to be the same. Uh, does that make total sense? Okay, so there's H naught and H1. Okay, write that down the table of observed and expected values. Um, yeah, so, so the problem with the observed and expected switched is you, you end up actually getting a different, one thing you're gonna get a different test statistic and p-value. So you literally are gonna end up with the wrong test. Does that make sense? Even if you put it in the calculator, right? Um, yeah, so if you put it in the calculator, so in other words, you just wrote E and N O and then switched them back twice. <laughs> the old, you did two, two, mista two, wrong, two mistakes and they turned into the right thing after two wrongs, you know, double negative type thing. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I'll take a little for switching the observed and objective. Well, I'm not going to like, you know, give you zero out of out of uh, five on this, but I'll take a little tiny off. It's literally such a small thing, dude. Right, and I'll take a small thing off. That sounds fair. That's, uh, mm, I would you, argue otherwise. If you make a small mistake, I take a small hey. number of points. If you make a big mistake, I'll take a big number of points, <laughs> okay? But if the mistake doesn't impact you getting the right answer, then it's a small. Does it really amount. matter? It's not about. Is it really a mistake? It's not just the answer; it's an entire process. Yeah. So the answer is the process. <laughs> <laughs> so arbitrary, but okay, go off, dude. Yeah, and that's how hypothesis te hypothesis testing is a process. It's not an answer, and it's hard to get used to it, but that's the way it is. Okay, so let's do observed and expected. And um, notice, by the way, we need to scroll up a bit. We have uh, white, black, gray, and other. Okay, and it's been a while since I did this, but let's see. Yeah, we can we can put a table in. So I'm gonna think um, kind of label white, black, gray, other. So one nice thing about Canvas is it's pretty easy to put a table in. Oh, you know what? I need one more. Oh, the good thing is not only is it easy to do that, but I can do that too. Because I want white, black, gray. And other. Then we have observed. And we have expected. Typically, you write O for observed, E for expected. Now, for the observed, really easy. You just put in the numbers they observed. And that was, let me find it this way. So 47, 43, 37.
And it said that we observed 200 cars and the rest were other. So we already have 47 plus 43 is 90 plus 37 is 127. So there are 73 left. Any questions on that? Okay, now we need to get the expected. This is one of those where they gave us a percent. 26% are white. Well, Wait, 20... one question, one question really quick. Huh. So the other is always going to be like, like whatever's left over. Of, yeah, like the total. exactly. Okay. They always have to add up to the total. That's just kind of, you know, reasonable logic stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so if we're doing percents, they got to add to 100%. If you're having a 200, they got to add to 200. So whatever the total is, everything has to add to the total. And again, that's just reasonable logic, nothing fancy. Okay, 26% of 200 is 52. So that's gonna be the expected for white. And then for black. We had 19%, 19% of 200 is 38. And then for gray, we had 18%, 18% 18 of 200 is 36. And then for the other, that should be what's left over. So 52 plus 38 is 90, plus 36 is 126. 200 minus 126 is 74. Okay. And just a reminder. Oops. We're going to be using good as a fit. So you can always go scientific calculator. You know, I don't expect you to do all the arithmetic like I do in your, your head. Um, you're, you're willing to use, the, you can always use the calculator. The calculator is always available on these tests. Just let you know that. Um, any questions at all on the table, the observed and expected table? Okay, so now it says write down the test statistics. Okay, should say test statistic and p-value. So that's a matter of pop into this goodness of fit calculator. 47, 33, 37. Seventy three, and then fifty two, thirty eight. And then 3674. And hit calculate. And you get a chi squared of 1.18. It's good enough. So test statistic. Is 1.18 it was, right? And then 0.76 is good enough for a p-value. Okay, what's the conclusion? First few words. There is. Yeah, there is statistically. And then is it significant or insignificant? We have all the information we need to find that out. Yeah, it's insignificant because the p-value is 0.76, which is bigger than 0.05, okay? Or bigger than anything you would ever use, but in particular 0.05. So insignificant evidence to conclude that and then the easiest way is copy it down.
change the capital lowercase, make the grammar good, that the distribution of car color in Tahoe is not the same as the distribution of car color in the United States. Okay, and I, I want to remind you, there's a fancy way of saying that we haven't found anything out. Any questions at all on this first question? Okay, let's look at the second question. Okay, the Gaming Commission is investigating whether a casino is cheating at the craps table. They want to see if they're using weighted dice. They observed 1,200 die, and the table below shows the number of each landed value. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then the same five questions I asked before. So I'm going to copy and paste this. Let's see if it copies the table. We'll find out. Yeah, it did. Good. Okay, what's the name of the test we're going to use? Again, not a trick question. Okay, I swear to goodness of it. Yep, chi squared gives us a fit because we want to find out if the distribution is what we'd expect it to be. Okay, and in particular, what would we expect the distribution to be if the dice were fair? So let's write H naught, the distribution of dice outcomes. Is so. What is the distribution if it's fair for dice? Uniform. Yep, is uniform. Any questions on that? Now I'm going to copy and paste because it's a whole lot easier. And H1 is the distribution of dice outcomes is not uniform. Any questions at all on part B? Okay, for part C, I'm gonna copy and paste this. I think I can do it, we'll find out in a minute. Yeah, I can actually. And I need to add in a new column and a new row and let's add in a new column too. So I can write observed was what was given in this table, and then we have the expected. All right, so now the question is, if we rolled 1,200 dice, how many ones would we expect to get if it's fair? So how many ones would we expect to get if we rolled 1,200 dice? Yeah, 1,200 divided by six, and that's 200. So we would expect 200 ones. OK, now comes a really easy question. How many twos? Would we expect? Yeah, also 200. Whole thing is uniform means always the same. Then 200, 200, 200, and 200. Again, if it's uniform, they should all be the same. Any questions on that? I'm going to try something. I'm not sure what it does in Canvas, but I'll see. I'm going to copy this. Let's go back to the calculator. We want goodness of fit. Let's see what it does when I paste it. Mm, kind of looks messy, but I think it's going to work. Yeah, just got to put commas in. So 182, comma 241, comma 187, comma 204, comma 215, comma 171. And the expected was 200, comma. Now I can copy and paste a bunch of times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Drop the last comma. Any questions on the observed and expected? So I calculate. 
Notice the chi squared is 16.28 and the p-value is 0 0.006. So the test statistic is chi squared. Equal, again, 16.28. And the p-value was equal to 0 0.006. Okay, then we write the conclusion. So hopefully you know by now, it starts out with there is statistically, is it significant or insignificant? Significant? Yep, significant. All right, in fact, it's strongly statistically significant because less than 0 0.01. Evidence to conclude that the, okay, and then it helps out. Distribution of dice outcomes is not uniform. And that's all there is to it. Okay, just a note, a little personal note. Um, I actually did a chi-square test when I was a gambler at the casinos because they would cheat. <laughs> They would bring in their professional cheater and it was like a cat and mouse game. I'd watch them, I'd do my chi-square test and if they, if the chi-square test had a low p-value, i leave that table, you just get out of there. If the chi-square test has a high enough p-value, you stick around and make money. So, do they really mess with the dice like that? Like weight, weight the dice? Um, it wasn't dice because I, I was a card counter. It was cards. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was cards and they brought in basically a magician. <laughs> and I did the same idea, but instead of dice, it was cards to see if the aces, face cards and non-face cards were um, distributed correctly. That's yeah. so crazy. I wouldn't even think to like think of something like that. Yeah, they don't do that anymore. That was when the mafia like, you know, ran everything. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, now it's corporations that run it and corporations aren't interested in doing that. They just change the rules so you lose. <laughs> Yeah, so it's different. Um, but anyway, that's chi-squared also. But chi-squared's used a lot. Um, any questions at all on the quiz before we move on? OK, so let's go and get back to where we were. And let me ask you, are there any questions about anything other than the project? The project we're going to do at the end, last maybe, maybe even half hour, we'll see. See how much time we have. Okay, because I'm making sure that we have time today to do project, to talk about the project, and for me to help you with the project. Any questions about anything? Seeing silence. I always like to give you enough time to think about it or type it in. Okay, if there's no questions, I'm gonna continue on with the chi-squared test. And I don't know if you remember from Tuesday, something I mentioned is the chi-squared test is predominantly used when we have qualitative survey questions. So for qualitative survey questions, the chi-squared test is, is usually the way to go. Okay, and I wanna give you a disclaimer and that is, if you ever take advanced stats, you're gonna learn you know, another 20 tests. And you know, there's a lot of statistical tests. So in this class, we're doing kind of the most commonly used statistical tests and the ones that aren't too evil. There's some that are really hard and we're not touching those. But if you, again, if, if you decide to get a master's degree, you may need a test that isn't any of the tests that we've used in our class 
because there's like a, a lot of different tests. Um, but the chi-squared is one of the important ones. And one of the main ways of dealing with qualitative survey questions. And as I mentioned, the goodness of fit is for when you want to find out when you have a known distribution, that might be, um, you know, the color distribution in the United States that you were able to find online. Okay. And it might be uniform. It might be normal. And what you want to do is you want to see if your distribution fits that known distribution. Because car color is probably something you can find online. Um, in fact, I think I did. I think I looked it up when I wrote that down um, in the United States. But good luck trying to find you know, the percentage of the different colors of cars in Tahoe online. You, you, you won't find that. So that's the kind of thing you're going to have to do a study for. And then you can do a chi-squared goodness of fit test. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the chi-squared test for independence. Do you remember hearing the word independence in this class before, not this week? When did we have it? What chapter was it or week was it? Because we did have that word. Remember when we had that word independent and dependent? Probability? Yeah, and probability. Okay. And we talked about when we had a table, a contingency table, then we talked about two outcomes being independent or dependent. And a contingency table, if you think about it, is a table of, of counts. Okay. Or actually, you know, probabilities in this case for. Um, qualitative variables, okay? And we wanted to find out if they were independent or not. But the problem with that is that all we knew how to do was one outcome of the first survey question versus one outcome of the second survey question. What we want to do today is not just one outcome, but we want to do it as a whole. So let me show you an example of a chi-squared test for independence. And here's the example. And it says, does, a ma does it matter what season a person was born in when it comes to the type of car they drive? Okay, what do you think? Table below shows the season and car type. We got spring, summer, winter, and fall. Sedan, SUV, and other. Do you think it matters what season a person was born in? I mean, correlation does not imply causation. Right, right. This is, this is to find out independence or dependence. So in other words, if you know what season someone was born in, does that give you a better idea of what car they probably, um, they probably drive? It's not the same thing as we're going to, you know, make everyone be born in the spring and because we want to sell sedans. It's a little different. Okay. So the answer is probably not, but you know, if you're one of those people that, you know, believes in astrology, <laughs> maybe you think it's true, right? Cause that's what, you know, astrologists all think that, you know, the month you were born in or the astrological symbol means everything about your life. Right. Um, that's not what astrology is. Pretty um, much. <laughs> Pretty much. I, so, I mean, I'm pagan, so I know a bit about astrology, and that's generally not how people actually practice it. But yeah, but it does say okay, hey, if, you're, if you're a whatever, you know, this this symbol, then you're more likely to, you know, this is your way of doing things or attitude or whatever, you know. Um, it's and, more ridiculous than any other kind of religion. Yeah, but you could definitely do statistical analysis on astro astrology, and this is kind of a simplified version. Um, honestly, I didn't want to do the astrology one because that would have 12 different answers, I think. I think there's 12 symbols. Um, so I'm just going to do spring, summer, winter, and fall, but the same idea. Okay. So then what we want to do is we want to say, well, what test do we want to use? So first thing, this is definitely not a goodness of fit test. Do you all see that this, this isn't about one distribution fitting some known distribution? It's not even like in the ballpark of that. Do you agree? Okay, this is two survey questions at which 
both answers to survey question are qualitative. And these numbers are not the answer to the survey question. What does the number 62 represent? What does that mean to say 62 right there? Thoughts? So it's important to know how to read the table. In other words, what does that 62 mean? The hint is look at the row and the column. People who have an SUV that were born in winter. Yeah, I'm going to add a couple words to what you said, though. The number of people. Uh, who drive an SUV who are born in the winter, you know, from the survey. So these are counts. These are not, the, nobody said the number 62 when they were asked a survey question. It's that there were 62 people that said, I was born in the winter and I drive an SUV. That's what that number means. So it's important to understand how to read the table. Okay. So now the question is, are these independent? or are they dependent? So if you happen to know somebody drives a sedan, then does that give you information about what season they were most likely born in? Is that any different than just the general? Okay, or if you happen to know someone was born in the fall, does that mean they're more likely to drive some other kind of car than those born in other, other um, seasons? Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. And the task to do is called the chi-squared test for independence. Any questions on the name of the test? All right, so just like, and hopefully you're all used to this by now, we write H naught, okay? Always write H naught and always write H1 when you're running a hypothesis test. So as I mentioned on Tuesday in chapter 11, you're gonna be writing down in words. In chapter nine and 10, words are not allowed. Okay, you will lose points if you write in words in nine and 10. So here's the words for H naught. That is the season, let's write burst season. and type of car people drive are independent. And I want to highlight independent. As I've mentioned many times in the class, I require certain things and that's a requirement. Okay. So you must have the word independent in H naught if you're doing a test for independence. Okay, H1. And I can copy and paste, because it's gonna be very similar. What do you think the one change is gonna be? It's a major change, but minor typing. So what's H1 gonna be? So what do you think H1 is gonna be? Remember it's a, yeah, dependence. I'm gonna get rid of that in. So birth season and type of car people drive are dependent. Any questions at all on H naught and H1? 
Okay, here's what you don't want to do because it's a disaster if you do. Don't switch H not in H1. Don't accidentally write dependent for H1 and independent for H not because then you're ending up with the exact opposite answer. The worst thing you could ever do is to end up with the exact opposite decision than what's the right decision. So um, make sure that independent is for H not, dependent is for H1. Any questions at all on H not and H1? All right, at this point, you should be used to it. What is our, what do you think our next step is? What's the next step? Once we've written H not and H1, what do we do next? Okay, we've been doing this for weeks now. So what's the next step? Yeah, p-value and t-stat, how are we gonna find that? Calculator. We're gonna go to our calculator. Yep, so let's go to the calculator. All right, and as I mentioned last time, we're towards the end. So I can go to the bottom. Which one do you think it is? I tried to make it obvious. Twenty-two. Yep, twenty-two. Test for independence. Okay, and it says enter in the de desired values and hit calculate, and the chi-squared test statistic and p-value be calculated for you. Okay, so let's do that. We have to go back and forth and type in the numbers. Seventy-three eighty-one. Seventy six, seventy eight, sixty Forty-three fifty-one, and then finally forty-eight fifty. Okay, I should mention one thing. Um, if you happen to need to do a chi-squared test, and there aren't enough aren't enough columns or, or rows given in this calculator, um, don't use this calculator. You can use the spreadsheet that I made. That's got a chi-squared also. Um, this calculator- Do we have is, an example like, the, like that in this class? No, that's what I was just gonna say. Cool. This calculator is tailor-made for the course, okay? So the only, the only thing that you have to use a spread, that you have to use a spreadsheet is for the projects because that's basically because some universities require a spreadsheet, so I have to make sure that that's part of it. But for the course, for the, for all for the, all the quizzes and the tests, this calculator will always work. Okay. Um, but I want to let you know when you leave this class, don't get angry at me if you've got too many rows or columns and you can't fit them all in my calculator, because you can always go to my spreadsheet and that'll work. Okay. A little harder to use, but it, it works. Okay. I just hit calculate. And look at the chi-squared, 0.48, and the p-value, 0.998. So let's write that down. Okay. 
Okay. Any questions on that? All right. What um, what's the conclusion? At least you should know the first few words. Yeah, there is insignificant evidence. Okay, to conclude that, and now I do the copy and paste thing. First season and type of car people drive are dependent. Okay. Notice, by the way, 0. 0.998. Do you think a larger sample size would be a good idea? Right? Remember that when you have insignificant evidence, it might be you were right, but your just sample size was too small. Or it might just be you're wrong. What do you think in this case? Do you think it's more likely that we were just wrong, or do you think it is more likely that our sample size is too small? Our sample size is probably just too small. One more guess. <laughs> when you get a p value, that, we were wrong. Yeah, when you get a p there value that is exceptionally, exceptionally high, give up. <laughs> a bigger sample size is almost never going to give you, um, going to change the result. If you get a p-value that was, say, 0 0.06, then you suspect that the sample size is just too small. Okay, But when a p-value is just really close to 1, it's time to give up. Okay, so that is important. And I want to let you know, even though chi-squared is not on your, on your project, but the idea of the p-value is, so depending on your p-value, you should be talking about it. So if, for example, any excuse to talk about the project is a good project, a good idea. If, for example, if you get a p-value of 0.998, that means your standard error was very, very good. Because that means that you're, you're being shown the truth, which is, Time to give up, okay? Whereas if you get a p-value of say 0 0.07 and you have 0 0.05 for your level of significance, then you say it's probably the standard errors issue. And the way to get the standard error to be smaller is to increase the sample size. Any questions on that, okay? Whereas if you get a p-value of say 0 0.02 and you had a 0 0.05 level of significance, then you're happy with your sample size and standard error because you got to reject the null hypothesis. So it is important that you understand the kind of the three types of, of cases. Any questions at all on this example, this test for independence example? Okay, if there's no questions on that, let me talk about the next type of of a test. So we have had, let me review again, we've had the goodness of fit test and the goodness of fit test is when you have one survey question, it is qualitative and you wanna look at whether or not the answers to that survey question indicate that the distribution of answers differs from some known distribution, okay? For, for chi-squared independence, you have two survey questions, both qualitative, and you want to see whether or not the answer to one of the questions is independent of, of the answer to the other question. All right, now comes what's called test for homogeneity. And it's, and it's a little confusing because it's kind of a mix between the two. So, it's when you have two groups. So you can think about it as one of the survey questions, what group are you in? Okay, that 
And then, the, and then you have a survey question that you're gonna ask to each of the groups that is qualitative. And you wanna find out if the distribution of answers for the first group is the same as the distribution of answers for the second group at which you don't know the distribution for either group. So they're different. So let me give you an example. These are best done by example. Okay. And I guess I should double note this. Chi-square test for independence to use when we have two survey questions that are both qualitative and we wanna see if they're independent. Whereas if we have two survey questions that are qualitative, but one of the first survey questions sees what group are you in? And then we wanna see are the, the answers to the survey question for each group the same in terms of the distribution. So here's the, here's the example I've got. And that is do single men and women take the same type of vacation? Okay, that might be something that, I don't know, a travel, you know, the, the airlines might be interested in or something like that. Okay, the table below shows the results of the study. So we have male, female, and international, out of state, and then more local. Any questions on what the example is looking at and what the table is displaying? Okay, I want to note this is not the same thing as independence because we're looking at male and female to see if male, if, if the males answers a survey question have the same distribution as the females answers to the survey question. Any questions that idea? Okay, when we have this kind of thing, we want to find out if these two distributions at which we know neither are the same or not, then that's gonna be a chi-squared test for homogeneity. Where have you seen the word homogeneity in your life before, not a math word? Chemistry. Okay, chemistry could happen. Bio could happen. <laughs> lot, there are a lot of places. So, you know, a lot of good answers to this one. Chemistry, bio, um, definitely could happen. Um, probably the first time you might have heard of it is when you were a little, little kid and you heard about homogenized milk. You heard of that? Okay. So, homogenized is uh, kind of you have the different types and you put it together. So it's kind of like, are you putting it together? You're not putting it together. Are they, are they the same or are they different? Okay, and that's kind of what homogeneity is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a chi-squared test for homogeneity. And to do this, as you're used to, we're gonna write H naught. Okay, and the way we express the null hypothesis is the following for this example. The distribution. And I can write distributions of a vacation type. Are the same for men and women. Any questions on H naught? Let me um, highlight distributions. That word has to be there because we're always looking at the distributions, seeing if they're the same or not. Any questions on that? What's different about this one compared to good as a fit is with this one, we don't know the actual distribution for the population of men. 
and we don't know the distribution for the population of women. We only know the sample. Where the, with uh, good as a fit, one we know the population, the other one we only know the sample. Any questions at all on H naught and the fact that this is different than good as a fit and it's different from independence? Okay, the next thing is we write H1. And is hopefully you're used to by now. I'm going to copy and paste. What do I change? What do I change to make it H1? So what needs to be changed because H not and H one are never exactly the same. They're slightly different, but they they mean exactly the opposites. I don't see y'all jumping in. We've kind of seen this stuff before. Again, very similar. Good as a fit. Any thoughts? So instead of the same, what did we change it to? Yeah, different, okay? And you can write different. You could also write not the same, that's your choice. It means exactly the same thing. Any questions on that? Yeah, it wants an S. Okay, what do you think we do next? What's the next step? You should be used to this by now. So what's our next step? Yeah, we go to our calculator. Okay, so let's go to our calculator. Again, this is not a test for independence, so let's go back to the calculator menu. I'm gonna to go to the bottom. Which one is this one? What number? So what number should we use? What calculator? Yeah, 23, test for homogeneity, because that was the name of the test that we already wrote down. Okay, now it says we got observed values for each A and B and hit calculate. It's as simple as that. So let's read them out. So the observed values for A were 29, 47, 33. And then for B, that was a female, 38, 42, 36.
Any questions? Okay, and I hit calculate. And what do we see? Chi squared is about 1.4. The p-value is about 0.5. Uh, 0.5. Any questions on the chi squared and the p value? Okay. Um, I just want to mention something. I'm not going to test you on it, but it's good for you to know because someday you might use this stuff. And that is, uh, there is a sample size necessary to use this. And it turns out you have to have a sample size so the expected counts are greater than five. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the details of the expected counts, um, but it can be done. So the expected counts is a little complicated, but there are other programs where it'll show you the expected counts and you just gotta make sure all the greater than five. If all the counts are really large, you're good. So notice all these counts are much, much bigger than five, and that's good enough. So when you get something in the borderline, you got to worry. So that greater than five, because it's qualitative, is what's needed. And for good as a fit, we did have expected, because those we put in the second row, and those expecteds all have to be bigger than five, or you really can't use the, uh, the chi-square, or you can't do anything, actually. You give up at that point or get a bigger sample size. All right, so it's conclusion time. All right, so the conclusion is, what is it? So what's the conclusion? At least the first few words. Okay, there is. How about the next two words? There is is great for getting started, but then the next two are kind of the, they're, they're actually the important ones. So what's after there is? Yeah, statistically insignificant evidence. And that's because our p-value is 0 0.05, much bigger than any level of significance you would ever use. Okay, remember 0.1 is really the biggest level of significance and 0.5 is much bigger than that. So statistically significant evidence, insignificant evidence to conclude that now I just copy H1. So that the distributions of vacation types are different for men and women. Okay, this is one of those where it's kind of on the fence. You got 0.5, that's pretty big. So there's a good chance that you were wrong in the first place. So probably wouldn't do a bigger sample size. Not as obvious as 0.99, but with 0.5, yeah, bigger sample size may not be very helpful. Any questions at all on this example and in particular chi-squared test for homogeneity.
Any questions? Okay, I want to give you a heads up that's very important. And that is we're getting to the point where we now have a lot of different types of confidence intervals and hypothesis tests. And you are responsible for knowing which one to use. I'm not going to tell you use a chi-squared test for homogeneity. I'm going to give you the paragraph and you have to know that it's a chi-squared test for homogeneity. And on the final exam, there's a lot of choices. So you have to know which one to use. And that's a big part of the final is to be able to just get started. So make sure you that you practice. Huh? Can you tell us what the attributes of these problems are so that we can, you know, get right. a better idea of which one to use? Like, right. So chi-squared have... test for homogeneity means that you have a survey question that is qualitative. I've said it a bunch of times already today, but I'll say it again. It's a qualitative survey question in which you have two groups and you want to find out if the distribution for the first group is different or the same as the distribution for the second group. That's homogeneity. Independence is when you have two survey questions that are both qualitative and you want to find out if they're independent or not. Whereas goodness of fit is when you have one survey question and you want to find out if the answer to that survey question or the distribution of answers to that survey question fits a known distribution. So again, I, I do keep saying it over and over again. <laughs> Just let you know that those are the three biggies. When I review for the final, I'm going to you know, do that more. And then we're going to go through all of them. Um, I've also written an app. Okay, It's actually my most popular app of all apps I've written um, that helps you out with it. Um, but we're not quite ready for that yet because we have, we have a couple more weeks. So yeah, so it has to be a qualitative survey question. You have two groups and you want to find out if the distribution of answers for the two groups are the same or different. So that's why I notice I put in red distributions because that's a big piece of homogeneity. Okay, really important. It comes up a lot. And in fact, it's when I've done some consulting work, and I never know what I'm going to be asked to do when I have to do some consulting work. Test for homogeneity is one of the one of the most common that I have to help them, you know, have to do for them. Is they often want to compare two groups with qualitative answers, and that's homogeneity. Okay, it's just common. Any questions on that? Okay, so that is a chi-squared test for homogeneity. And looking at the clock, it might be, we might be getting ready for a good break time because I don't want to do a full long example. And I just want to let you know in terms of the plan for today, I'm going to do a couple examples, but we've now had all the um, content that we have for chapter 11, um, but it's good to have some more examples. So after the break, what we're going to do is we'll look at a couple more examples. And then after doing the examples, then I'm going to help you out um, with your projects. Have any of you written your rough draft yet? Today was the day to have it written. I don't see you all jumping in. All right. So if you haven't written your rough draft, and you're probably not going to share it with me. Um, but the project discussion part is going to be not recorded, by the way, because that's personal stuff. And I try not to record personal stuff. I only record. Um, others. Okay. But I do want to spend at least some time, a chunk of time on talking about the projects since those are due next. So why don't we take a break? It's five o'clock right now. Why don't we come back in five minutes and um, hopefully you take a good break, you're relaxed, and then we'll do a couple examples and then project time.
Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you had a good five minute break. So let's get back and look at some more examples and let's see if we can figure out what kind of test. That's kind of the important thing. And then once you know what kind of test it is, it's not so bad. So let's do that. All right, so here is uh, an example. And it says, is there a relationship between the university that California Community College students transfer to and their grade in statistics. So we're gonna look at uh, students um, that transfer who took statistics, okay? And we're gonna assume they pass because if you don't pass, you don't transfer. So we're gonna make that assumption. Okay, the results of the study are shown below. And we have grade A, grade B, and grade C. We have, they transfer to CSU. And then we have a group of other people. Okay, so this is an example. And the first, the first part, which is the most important and often sometimes the hardest, and that is what test is this one all about? So what, what is the name of the hypothesis test we're gonna be using for this example? Let's see if you can tell me. Okay. Let's see if you can all guess. Because again, if you don't get the test right, then it's kind of over. So that first step is the most important step of any of these. Okay, so, all right, so we got two guesses. We got test for independence and we got homogeneity. Okay, so let's take a look. The first thing is this can't be good as a fit because Good as a, it's not an observed and expected. It's not to see if, you know, and we don't have a known distribution. There just isn't that. So that's the first thing. It can't be goodness of fit. So at least you both knew that it wasn't goodness of fit. So now the big question is it is it test for homogeneity or is it test for independence? So this is where you have to read the question. Are we looking to see if the distributions are the same or are we looking to see if there's a dependency? or independent. And there's a key word here, a few words, and that is, is there a relationship between? Okay, that's another way of saying, are they dependent? Any questions on that? Because a relationship means that if you know one, that gives you information about the other. And that's what independence is all dependence is all about so that's the first step is to know this is a chi squared test for home of independence any questions on that okay once we know that we have h naught what is the keyword that i told you has to be there for any H not in a test for independence. So you will get points taken off on the final if you are asked for a test for independence and you don't have the keyword. So what's the keyword? Distribution. It's a good try, but that was for homogeneity and good as a fit. So don't distribution definitely does not fit in this H not because that's for homogeneity and good as a fit. And this is not homogeneity, it's not good as a fit. What's the keyword? I had it in red at one point. <laughs> 
It's easy if you know the test name. Remember, here's a hint, look at the name of the test. That should give you an idea. Dependent, not quite. <laughs> Good try, but that's the opposite. <laughs> What's the keyword for H not? Independent, independent. So we say is that the university type that students transfer to, let's write CCC, students transfer to, and their grade and stats. are independent. That word independent must be there. And then for H1, I'm gonna do the copy and paste thing because it's so much easier. Turn the not to a one. And what's their, what's the one change? Dependent. Yep, independent becomes dependent. Don't get it mixed up. Don't get it mixed up because otherwise, in a way, that's the very worst mistake possible is to switch. So H0 is always independent and H1 is always dependent. For test for independence, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll re-highlight it just to remind you again. Just to make it shout out at you. Any questions on that? Okay, once we have that, we can go to our calculator. And hopefully you all know what calculator to use. What number? 22. Yep, 22. And now I just put in 153, 241, 197, 402, 415, 295. Any questions on the calculator? Then I just scroll, hit calculate. And what do you see? We got our test statistic, about 20. I mean, yeah, 20. And our p-value is four zeros and a five. What does that tell us? So what's the conclusion? At least the first few words. There is um, statistically significant. Yep, and I'm gonna put the word strong. When you have such a small p-value, you might as well brag about it. Strong statistically significant evidence. Okay, so note that, for example, a type one error is really unlikely here because the p-value is so tiny. So there's strong statistically significant evidence that now I have to do, 
copy and paste. Change the capital T to lowercase t that the university type that California Community College students transfer to and their grade and stats are dependent. Does that tell you that you don't have to get as good grades to get into CSU compared to other universities? Can we, can we say that from this test? What do you think? So can you say that you don't need as good grades to get into the CSU? Any thoughts? I don't see you jumping in. Okay, the answer is absolutely not. Okay, all you can say is that the university type and the grade are dependent. You can't get into any minute details on why they're dependent. That is an advanced statistics class where you have to do some other, other tests, just something like a Tukey test and some others too that you could do. But we're not gonna do those in this class. So you can go further, but you can't with chi-squared. Any questions on this example? Okay, let's do one more example. Okay, and the example is, do lodge pole pine trees and Jefferson pine trees have the same preference of the ecosystem that they grow in? The table below shows the results of a study that was done. Okay, and by the way, whenever I say a study was done, it means I made up numbers, but a study could be done. And we have lodgepole, we have Jefferson, we have slightly sloped, level, and steep. So the question is, what test do we use? See if you can tell me. Test for homogeneity. Okay, do I have a second on that? Or do you think it's a different test? I know if you're typing in, you know, it's a lot of words, whether whichever test you're, you're saying, but still you can type it in. See y'all jumping in. Okay, let's take a look at this. And notice again, this can't be good as a fit. This cannot be good as a fit because we don't have a known distribution. It's just not there in any of the words, the table or anything. And now it's, do they have the same preference of ecosystem. And that is not the same thing as saying, are they independent or dependent? That is about whether or not the distributions are the same. Because they have the same preference and the distribution should be the same. So you're right, it is a test for homogeneity. Okay, hey, once we know it's a test for homogeneity, we can write down H naught. What word has to be in H naught?
What word must be for H not? You can type it in, you can say it. If we have a test for homogeneity, what has to be there? Remember? Hopefully you can all hear me. Don't see y'all jumping in. Let me scroll up a bit, that might help. What word must be there? Yeah, distributions, okay. Same is gonna be there too, but the word distribution is the one that people forget to put in. So that's why I like to say this one's gotta be there. There's other words of saying same, but there's really only one way of saying distributions. Okay, so H naught is the distributions. Of um, ecosystem type. are the same for Lodgepole and Jefferson Pines. Okay, and then we do H naught. Let's uh, scroll a bit. Okay, then we can go H1. And we can copy and paste is the easiest. Make that not a one. And we say the distributions of ecosystem type are not the same or different, however you want to write it. For Lodgepole and Jefferson Pines. Any questions on that? Okay, let's go to our calculator because that's always next. Back to the menu. We have a test for homogeneity. Our values were 327, 129, 37. And then for B, they were 765, 241, 71. Any questions on that? And I just scroll and hit calculate. We have a chi squared of 3.3.5 and a p-value of 0.17. Three point five and point one seven. All right, conclusion. And what is the conclusion? At least the first few words. So it's the first few words for the conclusion.
There is statistically. Oh. There is statistically. Insignificance. Evidence. And then we can write to conclude that. And now I just copy and paste H1. And lowercase t. The distributions of ecosystem type are not the same for Lodgepole and Jefferson Pine. OK, which again means we know nothing. Our p value is not that big. So it might be true, it might not. We really don't know. Any questions? about this example? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, if there's no questions, well, I'm gonna stop the show. I'm gonna stop the recording. Because some of you don't want it recorded when you ask questions about your project or whatever. So I wanna make sure that we're you know, you're not like worried that it's on YouTube or something like that. So I'm going to stop.